You're listening to Fast Facts Perio Edition. And now, here's your host, Katrina Sanders. Hello, and welcome to Fast Facts Perio Edition. I know you've all been waiting with bated breath to find out what it is that we're going to cover in part two of today's episode, looking at radiologic bone loss and SRPs and the ethics around it. Last week, we dropped the bomb that yes, a patient who has radiologic bone loss is a patient who presents with periodontitis. And that stage one periodontitis, classified as the borderland between gingivitis and periodontitis, does have an identifier of radiologic bone loss. I did share that there is more to the story. And here we are in part two, unpacking the other side of the story, as drama always has another side. Today, we're going to be looking at how much radiologic bone loss needs to actually occur before we can see that radiologic bone loss on an x-ray. You see, Although we classify patients as a stage one periodontitis patient, if they have radiologic bone loss of 15% or less, the big question becomes, can you read that on a two-dimensional image of a three-dimensional object? Well, according to Cheryl Westfall in her textbook, the patient must experience anywhere between 30 to 50% demineralization of the bone particularly into that interproximal area, in order for us to be able to observe those radiographic findings on a two-dimensional bite wing or PA x-ray. Put simply, by waiting for bone loss to be visualized on an x-ray, that patient will have experienced anywhere between 30 to 50% demineralization of that bone, meaning If we are waiting to be able to see bone loss on an x-ray, it is highly likely the patient has already moved into advanced stages of the disease process. We can't observe things like radiologic changes around that crestal lamina dura, which could be things like a breaking or a fuzziness of that inner dental bone. Remember, sometimes the buccal or lingual cortical plates of bone can obliterate our opportunity to be able to approximate or see any changes around that crustal lamina dura. And so the reality becomes, although x-rays are an assessment tool, they're simply that, an assessment tool. One of many tools that we have in our toolbox that afford us the opportunity to effectively screen our patients. Jill Gehrig in her textbook reminds us that early attachment loss simply cannot be seen on x-rays. That x-rays are the shades of gray, so to speak, and that by looking at the black and whites of our periodontal probing, that we should be utilizing our clinical assessments, our probing, recession findings, Fication involvements, and even subsequent mobility to identify the earliest of signs, stages, and symptoms of attachment loss leading to a diagnosis of periodontal disease. With that, I hope we've been able to dispel rather the drama around radiologic bone loss. One final piece I will notate, and that is we do have many other tools at our disposal. As dental hygienists, we have the burden, nay, the responsibility to ensure that we are taking all of our assessments and applying them to surmise a patient-centric dental hygiene diagnosis. Thank you so much for joining me today as we unpacked what it is that we understand about radiologic bone loss and ethical scaling and root planing. This has been another episode of Fast Facts Perio Edition with Katrina Sanders. Please feel free to reach me on Instagram at the Dental Wine Genist or on my website, www.katrinasanders.com. Cheers.